All right, so let's go ahead and talk a little bit about stoichiometry. Stoichiometry is basically uh, counting atoms. That's what it's translated to. And so we're going to see when we're applying stoichiometry, we're going to count atoms and use that to relate uh, maybe reactants and products, maybe elements within a compound to each other or to a full compound. Uh, so we see that it gives us the ability to relate amounts of different substances to each other. And we can apply this in basically two different huge broad categories within chemistry. One of them is looking at a compound and comparing elements within a compound. Okay, so for example, let's say we have this compound, Al2O3. So if we're going to compare within a compound, what this tells us is that the counting atoms portion of this is that we're looking at a few different equalities. What we can say is in one mole of my substance, okay, one mole or one formula unit of Al2O3, within that one mole, I'm going to have the subscript 2 moles of aluminum. Okay, or uh, I could also say in one mole of Al2O3, I'm going to have three moles of oxygen. Okay, and so we're looking at the relationship between them. We could also say I'm going to have three moles of oxygen for every, if I'm comparing just aluminum and oxygen to each other, two moles of aluminum. So we're comparing these two elements to each other within the compound. And again, everything has to do with the subscript within that compound. We're counting two atoms to three atoms, or two moles to three moles. We can use the same relationships and equalities there. Now the important thing in this is that it gives us the ability to relate amount of one, re of one um, element to the amount of another element, or the total amount of a compound to the amount of one of the pieces, and then aluminum or oxygen. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to say, how do we relate the amount of maybe aluminum oxide to the amount of just oxygen? Okay, so we're going to say we have 5.0 grams of aluminum oxide, and we want to figure out, well, how many grams of oxygen is then that 5.0 grams of aluminum? Well, before we can talk about the amount of oxygen, we first got to figure out, well, how many moles of oxygen do we have? Because we're going to go from this amount to moles of aluminum oxide to moles of, of oxygen, and then finally to the mass of oxygen. Now, why are we going to take this kind of circular route of going to moles, moles, and then back to mass when we start with mass? Well, the reason for that is that this subscript, 2 and 3, it does not mean 2 grams of aluminum to 3 grams of oxygen. It means the amount, 2 moles of aluminum to 3 moles of oxygen, or 2 atoms of aluminum to 3 atoms of oxygen. So there's not this kind of direct conversion between mass and mass. We have to go through counting them, the number of each of those. And so each of these arrows represents a conversion factor. Well, in a previous video, we looked at going from mass to moles, and we know that that is our molar mass. Or if we're dealing with this ionic compound here, we could also define it as the formula mass. Then we want to use moles, this is going to be our mole ratio. And our mole ratio is what we just defined here. We would see in one mole of aluminum uh, oxide, we have three moles of oxygen. And that gives us the ability to find the moles of oxygen. And then again, if we're going to go from oxygen to oxygen, we're going to use the molar mass or atomic mass of oxygen to go from moles to mass. So let's go ahead and do that calculation. So we have 5 grams of aluminum oxide, and before we can find the moles or mass of aluminum of oxygen, we have to first find the mass uh, to mole ratio of aluminum oxide. And that would be the molar mass of aluminum oxide. So we would find that we would have 101.961 grams of aluminum oxide for every mole of aluminum oxide. Right? And I could get this from the periodic table. I have two moles of aluminum times its molar mass plus three moles of oxygen times its molar mass. 
to give us 101.961. That's the molar mass of the full formula unit, our formula mass. Next, we're going to use our mole ratio. Well, our mole ratio is based upon this equality. Uh, excuse me, this equality. So we have three moles of oxygen for every one mole of aluminum oxide. So I'd say I got one mole of aluminum oxide, and within that, I have three moles of oxygen. And so now, this would tell me the number of moles of oxygen that I would have. And our final step is that we want to actually find the mass of it. Right? And so for us to do that, we need to use the molar mass of our oxygen. And so we know for every mole of oxygen, we're going to have 15.999 grams of oxygen. And so we say, well, where did each of these um, conversion factors come from? This would be our molar mass. And this would be another molar mass, right? So mass to mole ratio is a molar mass, whether it would be for a compound or an element. And this piece here would be our mole ratio. Okay, and our mole ratio relates the molar amounts of different elements within a compound or the amount of an element to the total of that specific compound, okay? And so once we did this, we'd go ahead and see that we would find that we have 1.2 grams of oxygen in our original five grams of aluminum oxide. And we go and check and say, that makes sense, but we should have less oxygen than the total if we're talking about a mass amount. Okay, so we see we'd have more, uh, less oxygen than the total mass of our aluminum oxide. So now we see we can relate or count atoms, right, the amount of aluminum to the amount of oxygen when we're talking about mole ratios here. So to follow this up in our next video, what we're going to do is we're going to relate the amounts of aluminum and oxygen within a compound based upon the masses they would have, not just mole ratios, but if we're talking about a compound, we're going to talk about the mass ratios, or what we call mass percents of aluminum or oxygen, or whatever it would be within a compound.